Hey guys, welcome back to Treadmill Review Guru. Today we are going to review the Nordic Track 1750. This is the 2022 model. We have been really looking forward to reviewing this model, testing it out. And as you can see, it does have quite a bit of a different frame design. So we're going to look at all the different features and specs and give you an up-to-date overview on what we think. Let's just go over the construction on the new 2022 1750. If you are familiar with previous models, you'll notice that they've pretty much done a complete overhaul. However, it still retains a lot of the same functionality and features from the original 1750. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. The frame itself is actually just slightly bit smaller. So the frame specs, it's 80 inches long, 65 inches high and 38 inches wide. So just a, just a hair smaller than the previous model, but it has the same deck span. You still have 60 inches of length and 22 inches of width. Um, and you can see you've got a lot of room up here in front of the console. So they've kind of widened the span here between the handlebars. So you've got a nice big cockpit area, which I really like. The handlebars are about 33 inches from the top of the deck. And then you have a 33 inch span. So you really do have some nice room and you have about 24 inches from the console to the end of the handlebars. I really like how they've kind of increased the incline right here to add more length to those handlebars. Another thing that I really like is they have a little bit of a grippy texture. You'll probably be able to see from the side the texture of these beams changes. And that's because you've got more of a grippy surface right here as opposed to just the slick plastic. It's much more comfortable to hold, it's easy to clean off, and you're less likely to slip uh, or have your hand slip while you get on and off. So that's something I noticed right off that I really like. Um, also your cockpit design, which we'll get into just a little bit more when we talk about the console. Um, but I find it's just a little more functional, functionally usable and it just makes sense as I'm, as I'm on the machine. Uh, you still have nice side rails and they're textured, which is always nice for getting on and off the machine. These are five inches wide. So you've got a nice foot span there. You can easily stand on those foot rails uh, if you need to. And then the motor hood is once again, about 13 inches deep. It's a little bit of space up there, but they've lowered it down. So you're not gonna hit your foot on it. It's just nice and smooth all the way up there. One thing I really like about the new model um, is they have tucked the belt up underneath those side rails. So you'll notice right here, the belt is not exposed on either side. It's up underneath the side rails. I think this is both a cleaner look and a smoother design. And it also limits any, any issues that you could have with things getting stuck underneath that belt. They've also lowered the step up height. So previous models, the step up height was about 10 inches to get up onto the machine and they've lowered it to just an inch. So it's nine inches now, but every inch makes a difference, especially if you have maybe limited mobility, uh, it's just a little bit easier to get on. So as far as some of the dimensions, as I mentioned, your step up height is nine inches at a flat road. If you incline the top of the deck all the way up to a 15% grade, it lifts the top of the deck about 18 inches off the floor. Now granted, that's just the top, so you do have an incline, um, but you're gonna wanna be aware of those parameters when you're considering ceiling height um, and whether or not this machine will fit in your home. Always make sure to take the height of your tallest user, add 18 inches, and then a little bit of room for movement up and down as you're running. The uh, new 2022 1750 has a 3.5 horsepower motor. The previous model had a 3.75 horsepower motor. You're not gonna be able to notice the difference. The functionality is no different. The speed is the same, the incline is the same. So when you're running on it, it feels um, exactly the same as it did before. Uh, and then you also have a 12 mile an hour max speed. So a lot of the parameters are the same on the, on the both models. It will incline to a 15% grade and drop the nose of the deck down to a negative 3% decline so that you can kind of mimic a little bit of downhill work. Uh, so in general, I'm just impressed with the overall construction. I really like pretty much all the updates on this new 2022 model. So one of my favorite upgrades on the new 2022 model is the overall console layout. I feel like it is significantly improved. Uh, I feel like I have more room. So you kind of got your, your, I call it the cockpit. I've got my control panel. I've got my screen. It's all very easy to see and it's easy to reach. It's also intuitive in the way it's designed. So because I've tested and used so many 
treadmills with different consoles. If the console is clunky or there's buttons or it's random and it doesn't make sense, it really affects how the treadmill functions because you spend a lot of your time just navigating the console. So I love the fact that this is very clean and it's well designed as far as navigating the entire functionality of the machine. Obviously you'll notice the screen has more of a floating design. So it's anchored from the back uh, and it will tilt. So I can tilt the screen up and down. It will also pivot. So I can pivot the screen to either side. And that allows you to be able to see the screen if you're doing like a yoga workout or maybe you're on and off the machine for like a boot camp workout or something like that. You can shift the, the, the entire console itself side to side for better visibility. Uh, just like the previous console, you have your incline buttons on the left with your speed buttons on the right. So your preset buttons right here will automatically jump you to the next level. So you'll go from one mile an hour to two mile an hour to three mile an hour using those preset buttons. You also have more manual buttons down underneath. So if I hit the incline button down here, rather than jump me a full incline, it's going to take me 0.5. So I'm going to go from one to 1.5 to two to 2.5 using the manual buttons. The same with speed, except it, it increases by 0.1. So I'll go 1.1 mile an hour, 1.2 mile an hour, 1.3 mile an hour. So you can really get targeted speed and incline adjustments in there using the manual buttons down below. Uh, the start and stop is right next to that safety key, which just is intuitive and makes sense. If I need to get off the machine immediately, I can either you know pull the safety key out or hit stop real quick and it will bring up a 10 minute pause. I can run, do what I need to, and then come back and restart. And it will start from where I left off. You'll notice the screen has speakers here at the bottom. This is another thing that I love because the speakers project towards you. So you don't need very much volume, but they're very clear. You can tell that they've been upgraded. There's no static uh, and it's Bluetooth enabled. So, you know, most people may prefer to use earphones, but you do have the option of either the speakers or you can plug your headphones in and sync them with the machine. And then it has a fan down underneath. So the fan is nice and wide. It's angled directly towards the user. Another thing to be aware of that Nordic Track does, which makes it really easy to do intervals, is if you hit two buttons, two of your um, preset buttons in a row really quickly, it will jump you to that speed. So let's say that my max speed um, for running that I wanna hold a pace is 6.6 .6 miles an hour. So if I hit 6.6 .6 twice, it will take me to 6.6. .6. If I hit 3.4 twice, it will take me to 3.4 miles an hour. So that's another little um, custom feature that you've got in there, especially if you're running intervals or something like that, and there's a very specific pace that you want, it's easy to get there. So let's do a quick overview of iFit and all of the content that's available on the new 1750. iFit continues to expand their database, so they're always adding more classes and options. I'm really impressed with the content. Um, the videography is good. The, um, the visuals are good. The audio is good. So it really makes a difference. It feels very professional. Uh, so this is your main menu screen. So anytime you log into iFit and load up your machine, this is what's gonna come up. It's going to have kind of a featured workout over here to the side. And one thing that I've noticed is a lot of times the featured workout will correlate with previous workouts that you've done. So if you've been doing a whole bunch of runs along the beach, then that's what's gonna show up there. So that's kind of cool is it, it's a little bit targeted based on your history and usage. And then all, there's always some, some featured now things that uh, may have been recently live programs that they've now up, uploaded to the database that are lo loaded underneath. It will show you your weekly stats, so your total time that you've spent exercising that week, distance, estimated calorie burn, and then it keeps track of milestones, how many workouts you've completed within a la the last um, set amount of time. So here it started in 2022. Uh, and then you can see as you move down, you've just got, got different options. So right here at the top, they're going to show you, like I said, all the featured now workouts, but then you've also got news and notifications. They do have Ted talks. Uh, like I said, up next for you, other things that you've liked, recommended workouts and series based on things that you're, you're doing. And then of course they have categories down underneath from running and walking to beginner strength, hiking, things like that. So back up to the top here, if I do want to go to manual mode, all I do is just hit manual start there in the top corner and it will bring up the manual mode. Now, the nice thing about manual is you have complete control over the workout, but you can see you've got a, a track display, so it's nice and easy. Just like on the console itself, your incline is on the left and your speed is on the right, and then your metrics are up here. So if I increase my speed and I increase my incline, it's going to adjust and it will hold it there until I decide to change it. So you have complete control in manual mode 
over all the different metrics and how you want your workout to proceed. Uh, and that, that's nice because sometimes with a uh, subscription model, you don't necessarily have full manual access, but you do on, I, on the 1750, which means you don't have to pay for iFit if you don't want. So you do have a manual option that's really easy to use. Down here at the bottom, it's probably hard to see, but you've got little icons and each one of those will take you to a different aspect of the library. So from the home screen, I can go right here to calendar and it's going to tell me all the workouts that I've done recently. One feature that I absolutely love that Nordic Track has integrated into iFit is the Google Maps feature. So let's say you're training for the Boston Marathon and you actually wanna go in and run the Boston Marathon route. You can do that. You go into create, you go up here to left-hand corner, type in Boston, and then you can actually go through on the screen and create your own route. Uh, and that's really cool. Literally, you can do it anywhere in the world. The other day I was looking up Madagascar because why not? Um, browse is gonna take you to the main library. So the, the home screen just kind of gives you content that would be most applicable to you and things that you might be interested in. But the, the main work, the main library takes you to all your different options. So, and this is broken down very specifically. You've got challenges here at the top. If you wanna join a challenge, usually there's four or five workouts within that challenge that you can do. Uh, and then, you know, you've got trending series. So uh, iFit will take trainers all over the world. They'll hike the Himalayas. They'll run through Zion, Zion National Park. They'll run along the beach in, Ma in uh, Maui. So wherever they've been recently, those are gonna show up. Short workouts are really nice. If you just have, you know, 10 to 15 minutes and wanna just do something real quick, you've got everything from a quick stretch to yoga, a walk, core. Um, here's new to iFit. And then once again, down here, you can select by specific mode of training. So beginner running, walking, or you can go by trainer. And then over the last icon will take you to challenges. So as I mentioned earlier, the challenges will rotate throughout the year. Uh, you can go through and you can just do like complete 75 workouts and that can be a challenge in and of itself. Or you can go to challenges based on location and trainer as well. So iFit has done a really nice job of incorporating both indoor and outdoor workouts. You can do a studio workout following a trainer within a studio setting, you can do an outdoor workout. Uh, you've got walking, hiking, running, TED Talks, yoga, stretching, uh, even strength training that's all integrated. And that's why it's nice that the touch screen moves because if you are off the machine, you can pivot the screen so that's easier to see. The other thing that I love about iFit is it has incorporated some really uh, valuable training features. One is their new auto active pulse technology where if you are in a specific workout and you wanna hold your heart rate within a set range, if you have a heart rate monitor, it will sync with the machine. And then the workout itself will calibrate to keep you within that range. It also has auto follow. So if you are doing any specific challenge, let's say you're hiking somewhere, you can just hit play and the speed will adjust based on the format the trainer has determined and the incline will adjust for you as well. So you, you can just run hands-free and do it. So really impressive content, an expansive library, professional trainers, um, and just a lot of great options in iFit. Let's go over the functionality of the treadmill. That's what everybody wants to know. We got all the bells and whistles. We wanna know how it feels and functions when you're on it. So you probably can't tell, but the treadmill is actually running right now. I've got it at one mile an hour. The motor itself is almost completely silent. It makes very little noise. Now, once I stand on it, you'll hear the belt as it moves along the top of the deck. That's gonna create a little bit of noise, but in and of itself, this treadmill is extremely quiet. So once I step on there, you can, you can hear that just kind of little swishing noise. Uh, but they've done a great job of making it so that the treadmill itself is both secure, so you don't get rattling, the console doesn't move, and they've eliminated any noise or external thudding that can be controlled when you're using a treadmill. So right now I'm going one mile an hour. I'm just gonna kind of demonstrate for you the max incline, max decline, and play a little around with some of the speed options. So I will take it to three miles an hour. This is just kind of a standard walking pace. So walking at three miles an hour, I'm going to incline this all the way up to a 15% grade. So just kind of listen for that incline motor. It's very smooth. And really doesn't make much noise. So 
So that's the total time that it took to get from a flat road all the way up to 15% grade. You can see at the highest incline, the top of the deck is about 18 inches off the floor, but this is as high as it gets. And that's right up there at the top. So I can walk right here, starting to get a little out of breath, holding that three mile pace. But this is great for low intensity training. If you wanna hike, you wanna do some power walking, you've got incline and speed you can play around with without having to run. So I'm gonna drop the decline down just a little. Let's go back down to a flat road. And then I'll show you what it looks like when the nose is declined. So it declines really quickly. I'm back to a flat road. I'm gonna to go to negative one. So just dropping that nose just a little bit. Negative two and negative three. So one thing with this, you wanna make sure that the front end of your treadmill isn't up against a couch or a wall. You don't wanna get things caught underneath it because that front is gonna drop down just a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna go back to a flat road and I'll demo different running speeds so you can hear the noise on the deck. So let's take it up to six miles an hour. So really not too much noise, just a touch. Let's do seven miles an hour. Take it up to eight. Nine. 10. And back to three. So the speed adjustments are really smooth. Uh, the cushioning is nice. And it, um, you don't have to hold on in between those adjustments. All right, so you got to watch me run on the treadmill. I'm about 5'5 five, five and 125 pounds. I'm gonna have Matthew run on the treadmill real quick just to give you an idea of how it feels and functions with different size users. So we're gonna have Matthew start out at a nice easy walking pace just like I did three miles an hour on a flat road. So Matthew's about 6'5 and 230 pounds. Uh, so we'll have him run at six miles an hour. Let's take it up to seven miles an hour. Eight miles an hour. And there you go. It just kind of gives you an overview on, you know, the flexibility in the deck, the cushioning, and the overall noise output for different size users. So hopefully that gives you a helpful overview on some of the changes and updates on the Nordic Track 1750, the new 2022 model. In general, I'm really impressed with pretty much all the upgrades they've made to this machine. We've been testing treadmills for several years and most of them go through a minor iteration each year. You know, we'll see a tweak here or there on new models, but this is a pretty much complete overhaul. And I feel like almost all the upgrades have been an improvement. So there's nothing that I look back and I'm like, oh, I kind of missed that. Uh, the functionality, the, the comfort, it's all really adaptable and will work well for pretty much any user. Um, as we mentioned, you don't have the adjustable cushioning on the deck anymore, uh, like you had on the, on the previous model where you could tighten it up so it was more like outdoor surfaces or drop it down so you had that enhanced cushioning, but really I don't think you need it. Uh, it's very stable. I feel like you've got a nice cushioned landing, a strong toe off, so it enables good running mechanics and feels comfortable underfoot. I also love how they've dropped the motor hood. So in general, this is a fantastic all around treadmill. We're really impressed. We continue to think that the 1750 is just a great option for pretty much any user. Uh, if you have you know, additional questions or you'd like more details, check out our written review at treadmillreviewguru.com. We've got specs and pictures and, and a bit more information there. As always, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. We'd love to know what you have to say or what you think. And if you have the new 2022 model, 
give us your opinion. We'd love your insight. If you liked this video, make sure to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Our goal is to bring you updated content based on personal experience and hands-on use so that you can make an informed decision. My name's Kristen with Treadmill Review Guru, and we'll see you again soon.